And so we've got uh, we've got Steve Frakes, and we're going to talk uh, Lake Ozark Amateur Radio Club, and uh, that's ham radio for people like me. I don't know for you guys. Uh, <laughs> it's ham radio either way. You bet. <laughs> I don't know. And, and You're kind of a ham anyway. So yeah, there's no there ham involved. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, Years ago, there was. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got to do this interview last year with uh, some other, uh, a couple of other guys in the club came in and. Uh, not only is it a lot of fun for you guys, not only do you randomly talk to people all over, because it is like you see on the TV shows, you somebody, you find somebody online. Sure. But also this event is, uh, and I know it's big to Ken. Ken always talks about it. There's a reason why we have amateur radio. There's a reason why we have AM radio. And it's uh, if something goes bad, we can communicate. That's exactly right. You know, uh, uh, in the past, I'll say 30 years, uh, many people thought ha- amateur radio or ham radio, as it's called, uh, they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, they thought it was going to be a dying breed with the birth of the Internet mm-hmm. and the, the red- readily available communications there. But in 1992, uh, when Hurricane Andrew mm-hmm. hit Florida, they found out just how vulnerable communication systems were. Because not only did the uh, local infrastructure, communications for hospitals, ambulances, uh, the police and sheriff's department, but public service, not only did that take a severe hit down there, uh, the cell phone system proved Mm -hmm. itself to be more vulnerable than most people thought. And amateur radio uh, was called in. Uh, They did uh, uh, just an absolutely superb job with very little preparation. Um, Nobody knew that that this type of uh, uh, storm would take us uh, uh, to the point where communications became so vital. We knew that, Mm -hmm. but we didn't realize how fragile it was. Very fragile. Ken, you know that from experience. It it is. is. Well, I was down here several times when hurricanes came in. When Charlie came through, I was down there for that. Uh, They lost uh, cell phone towers all over the place. They lost some of the radio stations that were down in that particular Charlotte, uh, Port Charlotte area. They were completely down. The the one that we had at that time was the only one that stayed on the air. And the only reason we stayed on the air is because we happened to be on the feeder lines going into into the community before it got to the substation, which got wiped out. And uh, we stayed on the air, which was amazing in itself. And that's uh, when I said, okay, we've got to have a generator because this ever happens again. Yeah. We, we aren't going to get that lucky. And they've actually had to use it, I know, uh, during the time that we still owned it. And since that time, the gentleman who bought the station from us has had to use it. In fact, he ended up getting flooded out uh, in this last uh, hurricane that came through because the water levels came up so fast. And so uh, there's a reason they call it River Road. There's a river that runs yeah. down the side of the thing. And, and it, when you're only four feet above uh, sea level, uh, water has a tendency to find its uh, its own level. And, and it did. And But, but the, the communications down there was wiped out in a lot of respects. Uh, cell phone towers and stuff like and amateur radio was a big part of that uh, recovery as well until they could get everything back up and running uh, once again mm-hmm. so you know and we have it here in the lake of the ozarks area and throughout missouri uh, years ago when uh, before we even had this radio station i was just telling steve about the fact that we have a, a, an amateur radio uh, installation over on the other side of the lake and uh, we put that in in 96, and in fact, it just got recently upgraded and is part of the uh, state of Missouri uh, Skywarn uh, uh, system. And you can actually get on that particular repeater, 146.955, for those who are amateurs that might be listening out there. And uh, it'll tie in all the way down into the Springfield area and beyond, and it runs about a 100-mile radius that you can actually hit that repeater. And, uh, and it, like I said, it ties in with the weather system and the spotters that are coming up. Because a lot of the storms, like this morning's storm, yes. came up out of Arkansas through Springfield. And we saw it here at about, what, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock this morning, 7 o'clock, something like that. But anyway, it wasn't that severe. But we've had them come up that way. And the last couple of weeks, that area has been devastated with a lot of storms and tornadoes and things like that. Uh, the Joplin tornado is a perfect example of what happened down in that southern uh, western, southern portion of Missouri. It was devastating, and it locked out everything down there. So 
This is uh, they just had a huge grant for uh, to putting in this new installation. Uh, it's all up to date and it's all tied together with links, and you can actually get on there and talk. Shoot, hundreds of miles now with that thing. Oh yeah, all the way down, like you said, to Springfield and beyond. And the nice thing about it is. Uh, it interfaces with the National Weather Service mm-hmm. down there. There are actually uh, ham radio operators that during t- times of widespread uh, severe weather uh, will be in the Weather Service office manning that radio, and consequently we can get information to and from the National Weather Service almost instantly. Mm-hmm. As well as the hams that are around the area that are, are chiming in on the network, uh, saying, hey, we got this situation coming through. This is, uh, I'm seeing clouds. I'm, and a lot of the hams are, are trained in weather spotting, which is another course that they take, in, uh, kind of a side side hobby, I guess you could say, or side interest as to what, what a thunderstorm looks like, what a tornado formation starts to look like and stuff like that. And then they transmit, uh, get on the network and, and, and give instant, instant information versus just looking at a radar screen and they're, uh, seeing a possible image, they can actually be uh, eyes on the situation. And it's real handy, too, because uh, by taking those classes, you're using the same terminology as the weather service, and you know what you're seeing and can uh, be the eyes and ears for the weather service in an area that they, they can't physically observe. Mm-hmm. So it, it comes in handy for that. Let's talk about people that aren't involved in amateur radio, ham radio. Let's talk about that. What exactly is ham radio, amateur radio? Well, amateur radio is a radio service licensed by the Federal Communications people, uh, the commission, and uh, it is uh, strictly a a hobby-type communications, but there's a lot of experimentation with new technologies some new technologies that are even used in uh, in broadcasting and cell services and and uh, services like that that use radio actually began in the amateur radio service. Although a lot of times it's been uh, it, it's been improved and they've uh, made uh, vast improvements to it uh, in in the industry afterwards. Yeah, for instance, like a uh, Bluetooth uh, that was uh, developed by a amateur radio. Uh, um, no kidding. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth was developed in amateur radio. The the idea of having cell phones, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when they when you can go from cell to cell to cell to cell, that was kind of developed through the, the amateur radio because they had they had these these packet stations back in the time, and that's and that that was became a derivative of, of that. Uh, so there's a lot of other things that have come out of that type of type of experimentation by amateur radio people. That's what it, I, I mean, that's what I see it. I see it as people that are curious about something, going in and, mm-hmm. and tackling it and, and creating something, their, their station or their contact. Why you, Steve? Why did you get involved? I got involved. Uh, we, we were, Ken and I were talking before airtime. Uh, we kind of went at, both of us kind of went at the radio hobby in reverse. I started out babysitting ball games at a small market station yeah. in Illinois and developed a taste for the electronics end of it. Uh, Ken, on the other hand, was involved in uh, amateur radio at a younger age, and it worked into his profession. Um, But you find all sorts of people that... uh, Hey, we're going to continue that conversation when we come back. Uh, I took out of the conversation with Kenzie is I have to work on it if it rains. (laughs) (laughs) You got it. We're talking amateur radio here at Lake of the Ozarks and uh, with Steve Frakes, and we've got Ken Kenzie in studio as well. I asked the general question right as soon as we went to break. What was the craziest, most unique person that you contacted, and you both said the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, there's no way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and it was funny how it happened. I was off work. It had some minor surgery. Had a night where I couldn't sleep. So I left the wife in bed to have her peace and quiet. I went in and got on the radio and uh, uh, just put out a call, a general call, to, to see if anybody else was up that time of night. I think it was about 2 in the morning, and a local time. And a guy answered me, and his name was Joe, and he was in California. 
and it was two days later I found out that it was Joe Walsh from the from the Eagles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Joe Walsh from the Eagles yeah. is yeah. an amateur radio guy. Yeah. He's a big amateur radio guy, and, and he was at the, uh, like I said, at the reception at the NAB for the uh, ham radio folks that show up. There's usually about a 1,000 or so that show up at that thing, and uh, when Bob Heil hosted it one time, he invited his good friend, Joe Walsh, to come to the to the reception. Sure enough, he was right there and you know, talked okay. to everybody and shook hands and all that good stuff. Amazing. Yep. Ham radio operators... I mean, cover the gamut. Uh, you might be talking to a school teacher, and ten minutes later, you might be talking to a politician. Um, some people whose names you might know, uh, Jim Croce, yes, was a ham radio operator. Uh, he's since left us. Country music uh, star uh, Patty Loveless really? is a, is a ham radio operator. Ronnie Millsap. Oh yeah has been a ham operator for years. Chet Atkins was. Of course, he's gone now. Uh, and I mentioned Joe Walsh, uh, but Walter Cronkite was another one. Really and, big. So there's, it runs, oh, and Priscilla Presley, which is one that I just recently found out about. <laughs> That's very unique. I didn't didn't realize it at all. So I, We've got, uh, I, in the last couple of minutes, I want to talk about the event to get people to come out there. But this is something that, uh, y- you know, if it's going to continue, the tradition is going to continue, you have to get younger people involved, more people involved. Why, what would you tell people that, if, hey, come on out? Give this a try. Well, what you're going to see if you come out, now we're going to be at the city park next to the Aquatic Center on uh, the 21st and 22nd, and we'll, we, we will be out there the whole 24 hours. We've gotten permission to be out there all night. And what you'll see is what we would do if there was a disaster in the area as far as communications goes. Uh, we'll be putting up uh, a generator. Uh, to generate power. We'll be actually stringing our antennas in the trees so that we'll be able to uh, to communicate. And uh, they make it into a contest in order to spur uh, activity uh, and participation. But uh, when you've got uh, roughly 2 million amateur radio operators in the world, and I think the last, last count I, I had, there's... Uh, uh, in America, there's about 750,000 of us. Uh, so there's quite a bit of activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also uh, uh, digital modes. So there'll be computers out there the guys will be using. Plus, we use computers to log our entries. Um, but there'll be, uh, uh, we'll be using digital communications. We'll be using voice communications as well as CW, which is Morris Code. Mm-hmm. So um, you'll get uh, it, if you want to come out and take a look, you'll get an idea exactly what uh, what amateur radio is about. We don't think of disasters in this part of the country like you do. Earlier we had discussed hurricanes, but you know we're not too far from the New Madrid fault line. Earthquake. I, I don't want to be gloom and doom, but earthquake is a possibility, although low it might be, but also tornadoes. So uh, we're not immune from disasters in this part of the country. Mm-hmm. Is that what it looks like? Because when I hear ham radio, I, I go back to the old TV shows where you see the the bulb on the top and, uh, and you hear the weird noise and things like that. What's it look like today? What does it look like? You said digital. What does it look like today? It it looks like that, um, uh, as oh, you said, not, with the noise. But but. Uh, You'll see digital communications. There are modes that actually transmit pictures. Uh, Currently, there are, I believe the last count is 18 satellites that we have up. And they go up as excess baggage on the rockets with uh, commercial and military satellites. So there's guys that uh, that's all they do is satellite communications. Um, and once again, that can be digital, it could be voice, or it could be uh, in one form or another a video. So it's um, whatever your imagination almost can dream up. Mm-hmm. So the event coming up the 21st, 22nd, the 24 hours, is that for other operators who may want to join in, or is that for just people that might be interested or both? Well, it's actually for both. We invite the public, we encourage the public to come out 
and see what we do. At the same time, um, we'll have, uh, there's about 50 uh, members of the Lake Ozark Amateur Radio Club, uh, and a certain percentage of those will be there as well to help set up, tear down, and operate during that event. Uh, operating for 24 hours straight, um, like like a job would be a little draining on an individual so we try to split it up and shift tell it. me about it <laughs> <laughs> try to split it up uh, in shifts a little bit with the guys and it gives the guys uh in the amateur radio group and i say guys we do have a few women um it gives them a chance to see what uh, emergency operations would be like on the long term, stimulate the thought process to think of things we haven't thought of in the past, how we can make it easier, how we can make it more efficient. You know, the word that keeps popping up in my mind is curious. Uh, if you are a curious person, if you want to build something, if you want to connect to something, if you want to talk to people in other parts of the country, this might be this might be something for you. Oh yes, quite definitely. And uh, for people that like to have conversations, um, like to play chess on the air, uh, I've uh, there's a number of people that do that. Uh, there's also people that uh, all they concentrate on is. Uh, talking to as many foreign countries as they can yeah, yeah. that's yeah, actually a lot of fun <laughs> it's yeah i can yeah it's uh it, yeah it just it, there just seems to be no limit but, there isn't any limit really you know there's, there's, there's all kinds of different avenues that you can take and, and really enjoy an amateur radio without any doubt that's the lake ozark amateur club that's steve frakes ken kenzie in studio oh, studio as well people want to get a little more information some way they can do that loarc.com or look for loarc on facebook or on uh, in both medias and uh, once again want to invite everybody out to the park be right back 